Backer will open it right up for questions for Coach Backer. Once again, please take the microphone and start with Kelly. Andrew, you have a team with a new quarterback, and, and maybe they're going to do some different things, and it's not a team you play all the time. So how difficult does that make your preparations for yeah. the game? So uh, so Rocky Lombardi is the one that they've named the starter. Uh, that was Mich- He was at Michigan State this past season. Uh, great addition for Northern Illinois. Uh, we, we have had the opportunity to watch Michigan State tape, obviously not for the scheme, but just to see you know, what Rocky can do as a, as a player, as a thrower, as an operator. Uh, the thing that I would compliment him on the most is just maturity, experience. He's got real experience uh, playing in the Big Ten in a very competitive conference and uh, just a very good decision maker. So uh, that, that's what you look for when you have a mature senior to redshirt senior quarterback. So uh, it's, a, it's a great addition for Northern Illinois. But uh, back to your point, physically, tangibly, what we're able to see is, is him being able to be an efficient thrower, to throw very accurate outside perimeter footballs, and then being able to be very accurate on intermediate uh, throws. So. We, we've created a cut-up for the kids as well, specifically for the DB, specifically for the safety, so they can really see what his nuances, what his mechanics look like. That being said, it is an inconvenience that uh, we've got a quarterback that we don't get to see in a Northern Illinois jersey to, just to see how he operates within the framework of their offense. That being said, they have an identity as an offense. I'm sure they've created plays that he's most successful with. They have multiple quarterbacks that they have on film from this past season, but uh, we've been able to focus on their scheme but also have the personality and the talent of Rocky Lombardi, so we're prepared for them as a, as a whole. Coach Thacker, um, a variation on the same question. Uh, you've got a bigger, faster, stronger D-line than you had a year ago. Uh, how do you put pressure on this guy out of the box? Are you more or less playing it straight up and decide about stunts down the way, depending on how it goes, or how do you apply that? Yeah, pressure. yeah, so I asked about the defensive line. Um, I, I have it talked about or accentuated our defensive line a lot. So I I guess for me as a defensive coordinator, uh, it should by nature put less stress on me. You know what I mean? So now the the defensive line, so you feel um, less required to hit every single call. When I say hit a call, I've got to call this perfect blitz versus this formation that we prepared over the course of the week and allow those guys to be able to really establish the line of scrimmage and then create negative plays on their own without just having to hit calls, which would be bringing more pressures or more patterns. So having that luxury, having that confidence, preparing in that way as well, that, that would be one of the biggest advantages. And then we'll still be very very calculated and high volume as far as attacking and bringing four or more. Once we bring four or more, that's when we get into our pressure family. Rod? You have a, a veteran group for the most part, and they, they all played well in the spring. That carried over to, to camp. Do you Did that make the decision-making a little easier for you when it came time to say, Hey, this guy needs to be above the line. This guy, maybe a little later in the season. Is there any couple of guys like maybe Robinson or Brooks that may eventually get above the line during the season? Yeah, yeah. So the big thing is you just asked about this uh, maturity and just you know we as a program, we as continuity of coaches here with Coach Collins have been here for three years, so we're really seeing the return on the investment right now. So um, where that's shown up the most is communication. I know that's a little bit of a cliche answer. I know that's not a sexy answer, but it's, it's amazing if we can we can get to the talent piece of which we have talent right now if those guys just communicate and get on the same page so there's so much continuity in our communication so that's at a much higher level so we're not beating ourselves in fall camp we're not beating ourselves in practice right now so that's a big piece of it and then again you reference the ATL um, I know it's something that coach Kylan takes a lot of pride in uh, I would say specifically on the defensive side of the ball we take advantage of that uh, and then we train our guys that that uh, once we tell them when they're going into the game, we have a, uh, a staff meeting Friday morning, and we tell Coach Collins, this guy's a green light to go. So at any time, as position coaches, we have the opportunity to put those guys in. So we use that to our advantage to keep guys fresh, and specifically on defense. Where does it show up the most? It shows up the most in the defensive line, where we're hockey shuffling those guys to keep them fresh. And then it really shows up at the most on the perimeter as well. So when they take shots and they try a fade ball, we don't have a corner go run 80 yards we just bring the next guy in so he's fresh for the next play. So so we take, man, I don't, uh, we, we feel like that provides a ton of value to have those guys in the mindset that any time they're green light to go so that we won't fall into the trap of one deep, two deep, you're going to play this X amount of plays. And then you just reference, is there, is the, will the ATL be able to evolve over the course of the season? Absolutely. We've got so many guys that are continuing to uh, give us depth in the roster and then are still able to go put good stuff on tape that we're going to need through the course of the season. We know we're going to have attrition at some point. It's inevitable in football, so that thing will be ever-changing, ever-evolving. 
Okay. On Saturday, beyond obviously the, the scoreboard, what sort of things are you going to be looking for that's going to tell you that they've made the progress and they're doing the things that you want them to do? Yeah. Uh, we've tried to rebrand our side of the football. We, we didn't, uh, we tried to take the best part of what we were in the past. And now we've, we've taught, we called ourselves the dark side. So there's, when you have a group in a room, you try to create a culture. I know culture is an overused word, but, uh, I, I really hope, uh, that when you watch us play that our non-compromising deal is always effort. I know I give you that answer a lot, but I hope there's just a, uh, uh, there's a visual to it uh, of how guys are flying around, the intensity, the effort with which they're playing with. Um, and, and I truly believe that irregardless of scheme, that's something that you don't have to be a football coach to see. I know you can see successful plays on offense, but over the course of the game is what type of effort, attitude, urgency are they playing with? And then I think more so than ever, one of the culture pieces that we've created, uh, Coach Collins called it a cult yesterday, but we're a cult of attacking the football. So in practice, we're constantly training behaviors to create takeaways. And I've talked about this last time, but we have the immodest goal of trying to lead the country in takeaways. And that's showing up on tape in every single day, not just interception, but for us physically attacking the football and trying to create punch outs, trying to create strips, trying to create rips, getting into chase mode and punching the football out. So hope we play with unbelievable effort, intensity, urgency, run to the football, and then we're truly attacking the football as well to try to reach our goals. Outside of that, there's not a... Uh, there's not a, a quantitative thing that we're going for. We're not going for a certain amount of yards. We're not going for a certain amount of points outside of finding ways to win the game as a team. But we're looking for those qualitative things for us to go out and visually display those. From watching the first week of football, the week zero games, and just generally every year, tackling is always sort of a hold your breath moment, especially with the way practices are run now. I guess, how do you feel about that? You do have a veteran team, but I imagine there's some concern about open field tackling those sorts of things kind of where do you feel like you guys are at with that yeah um i remember last year last year coming off of uh the covid year was it like florida and florida state or florida and miami open the season or and not to beat up on anybody else but i remember that was like the game first game of the covid season and uh the commentators and kind of one of the storylines was the tackling because it had been so long so uh, obviously we use that lens uh and it's Training behaviors while protecting your teammates. And that, that's the biggest piece. We could go out there and we could be meat-headed football coaches and we could just say, hey, we need to tackle, we need to tackle, we need to take guys to the ground. And uh, we, were try we tried to do that at moments, but be in a very controlled environment. So on scrimmage weekends, we tried to have certain scenarios where we had true tackling because it's, it's not real until you take someone to the ground. Outside of that, we have to train behaviors. So we talk about body position number one. We talk about their leverage, number two. It's an overused word in football, but leverage, what angle they're coming from. If you have leverage, if you have an angle on someone, to make sure that you're staying with the correct leverage on the correct shoulder. And we talk about near foot, near shoulder. And then today versus the developmental squad, the tempo was thud period. So thud period is getting in dominant body positions and now being able to wrap and squeeze my arms and run my feet on contact. So when I do that, it actually trains the behavior to not leave my feet. When you watch college football at the front end of the season or football at the front end of the season, most of the missed tackles are guys that are reaching. They reach instead of getting their, their body in good positions or they dive and leave their feet. So we thud, we wrap and squeeze, and we tell them to run their feet on contact. And then even today, we have a group circuit. Our circuit today was a tackling circuit. So we have four different circuits, four different stations where we go there and we try to uh, create as realistic a, a scenario of tackling situations to, to try to mitigate uh, not tackling as much while protecting our teammates, which is most important. We feel like having our guys available is most important. What happened? A bird? A... <laughs> Andrew did a good job of weighing it down. I didn't think he did for a second. So. <laughs> Time for a couple more from Coach Thacker. Rob, go ahead. Kenyatta Watson's a guy that didn't have the advantage of playing in the spring in the first part of camp. What did he do? to prepare himself to get where he is now in the short time that he was out there getting reps? No, number one, he, he took care of his body. He had to. Yeah, he had one of those nagging, uh, longer-term nagging uh, injuries. I'm not sure what I could talk about ever. But uh, so he, he, he handled his business in the training room, which takes a level of maturity for a college kid to go there and have a routine. Um, that being said, when you're in those situations, you have to take mental reps. So how can I actively take mental reps? I can get into the film room. I can do that or out in practice, I can go, we call it chase butterflies. 
I can go chase the butterflies and talk about uh, Netflix and chilling and talk about what I'm going to do the weekend. Or I can get the call from the coaches on the sideline. I can put myself in that scenario. I can watch my teammates to see if they succeeded or failed in those moments and learn from those in those situations. So it takes a level of maturity. And I thought he had a level of maturity in his preparation when he wasn't able to give the physical reps. I want, I want to ask about two different defensive ends. Um, first, Antonio's kind of where is he and what do you, where, how's he coming along? And then two, uh, Kevin Harris, kind of what have you seen from him in, in a spring and a fall and kind of how good you think yep. he can be? Yep. So, so we've got Antonius and, and uh, make sure that we had him available all fall camp. Just make sure to get some nagging things out of the way. But we got a level of maturity. we got a level of experience. I think AC had his best game this past season in Louisville. And you can really see he had a two-sack game that game where he was able to be the field five technique. And we played a, a very vertical technique where he was able to use what is his best quality, getting off the football, being heavy-headed, and then transitioning to pass rush. So we were able to use him in those situations, and he continues to be good in those in those scenarios. Uh, and then you talked about Kevin Harris. Kevin Harris, uh, he is the twitchiest defensive lineman we have, which talks about his first step, his get off on the pass rush, uh, a very violence. And then I think I'd mentioned this last time we talked, but just controlled violence. Um, he is over eager to want to go out there and make every play and be disruptive, which we want that mentality, but just a level of composure, making sure that he's good on assignment. And uh, Coach Coleman, and, and he has done a great job of, of building some maturity there. So uh, both those guys will be available for us on Saturday to make a bunch of plays as we rotate those defensive linemen in and out. So very pleased with both of their, their progress and where they're at. Okay. Thank you, Coach Stafford. Thanks.